Microsoft took away the V1 connector for Power Apps to trigger Power Automate flows. Yikes! So what we're gonna do in this video today is we're gonna walk through what does that mean for you, right? Like if you go in there and create a new flow, the V1's gone. So that means that I've got 50 plus videos out there that show you how to use the V1 connector that they're not there. So the idea of this video is we're going to walk you through how to use the V2 connector and kind of bridge the gap by explaining like what it does versus what the V1 did, show you how that works. We are also going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into one of my most popular videos, uploading files and show you how the new V2 connector, you can upload files the old way with the V2 connector, or you can upload them the new way. And last but not least, if you really still want the V1 connector, well, I found a way to still get it today. So we're going to talk about how to do that. Who knows how long that'll be good, but until it is, it is, because I like the V1 connector. Sound like fun? Well, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so let's just build a new flow to kind of start, right? So we're gonna say create, and we know that Power Apps flows start under Instant Cloud Flow. So you search for Instant, and if you look right here, you'll notice that the Power Apps V2 trigger is the only one here. But maybe that's not a problem. I don't know, so let's just say skip. Since we know that sometimes that interface doesn't show us everything, let's try this way, right? So from here under triggers, we'll click on Power Apps, and Wampa Wampa, the V1 trigger is not here. It didn't say V1, it just said Power Apps before. Notice that they put Power Apps V2, but they didn't even put the space in here. It's like they try to add it. So you can only use the V2 trigger now. Why, yeah, yeah. So let's choose it. So what is really different about the V2 trigger is that, remember how in V1 we always asked in Power Apps? Like, let's switch over here to one of my flows that has the V1 trigger still. And in this old flow, right, you can tell it's the V1 trigger because it says no additional information here, right? Whereas this one has the add an input. But inside this one, what we would do is we'd go into our box and we'd say ask in Power Apps, which would be then how we'd create dynamic content, right? So that's how the V1 worked. That's how all those other videos show it. So with this one, if we go in here and add a compose, right, this is back to the V2. There's our compose. So if we go here and look, there is no dynamic content because what you have to do in this one is go back up here and add an input. When you choose add an input, then you have to tell it the type. So the same way I can flow how we have to cast or tell it what our variable types are, when we do dynamic content, we have to tell it what that is. When we did ask in Power Apps in the V1, it figured out what type of content we wanted. So now we have this option. So like if we do text, now you can do text by giving an input or you here we probably would just change this to be like my text, right? Always change these to something less generic so you understand what they are. But now if we get on here, under this, we now have my text. And so we'd use the dynamic content, right? So that would be, now it's the same, everything's the same, right? Like you still would trigger this with Power Apps, you would have to pass in the property my text, that would have to be a text property, and when you passed it in, it would get placed here as dynamic content. So all of it works the same way as V2 once you get past this point. But you had to get to this point and you had to manually add the input. If you want to ask again or ask for something different, you can go here, add an input. You could add another one. So the different types, so you've got text. Yes, no, this is Boolean, true, false. Like it should have probably said true or false, right? It's true or false. A file data type, that's a little bit different. We're going to explore that in a few minutes. Email, which is really just text. That to me is kind of confusing. Like it's just a string. It doesn't actually do any email stuff. A number, so if you want to pass a number, and then a date. Okay, so that's all you have to do. You choose which one of these you want, and then you're going to get it. You can rename them or not. Also remember, with all of these, you can always go up here, and you can change it to make the fields optional. You're not going to want to make them drop downs of things like that, right? Because that's not... Right, in Power Apps, you want to drop down Power Apps, build a drop down Power Apps. You just want to pass this thing text, but you could make a field optional if that was something you desired. Okay, so that's all that. So here, let's switch over. I made one of these flows already that has one of each of these. Let me switch to that one real quick. All right, so here you can see I just added one of each of the input types so we could kind of see how they would work. And then down here in the compose, I just have each one of those. I made a compose for each one, right? Because this is how I learn, right? Like I don't get to watch a YouTube video for me. I have to go and figure this out so I can make the YouTube video. But if you were trying to figure that out on your own, this is exactly what you do, right? Make one of each input and then throw each one in compose and see what happens, right? So we have this flow called flow practice. It's all set. So let's jump over to Power Apps. Over here, we will say add a flow. We will search for flow practice. I know, me and my fancy names. We'll add that in, right? You can see the other flows we're gonna mess with a little bit already sitting here. 
While that loads, we will create ourselves a new screen so we don't get that confused with the old screen. And now it's added, we will say insert a button. And then here we would start to type in flow. We'd have flow practice.run. And so you can see up here at the top that it's like, hey, I need a text, right? So unfortunately, like the name, it says text. It tells you the type of data here. This is what we named it over in flow, right? Boolean, and we know we named that yes, no, right? So if we do text, so we'll say, hi, mom, Boolean. So that's true or false. So we'll just call, uh, we'll say false for that. Email. And so just to prove you, it doesn't actually have to be an email. Email went here. Email is really just text. We're just going to prove that as we go by. Number. So we do like 12. Remember, numbers don't have double quotes around them. Text, if you put 12 in double quotes, that makes it the text one, two, not the number 12. For date here, we'll just use the today function. And then for the file record one, I don't want to do that one yet. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to close this, close this. And then we're going to go back over to that flow real quick. We're going to go to file content and we're going to say, you know what? Oh, look, it's already not required, right? So if we do that, that would make it required. We're going to make the field optional. Perfect. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's see if that works, right? I didn't practice this in my run because I didn't expect it to be there. But we're going to hit play. We'll press the button. It ran pretty lickety split. We'll go back over here. Now, we need to see that run, right? So we got to kind of back up a step. There is our 28-day run history. If we click on it, our flow run failed. And it's bad because the file didn't exist. So the flow triggered, but because we hadn't composed, it didn't work. So we're going to ignore that for now, right? So the trigger didn't care that it wasn't there, but my flow body wasn't set up for it to be optional. So, But if we look here, hi, mom, false, email went here. So email is really just text, the number 12. And then today's date, 10, 20, 25, 2023. Okay. So that works exactly the way that we would expect it to work. So if you're watching one of those old videos you know, and I say, hey, ask in Power Apps for, and we're, you know, getting some text, then you're just going to go in here with your V2 trigger, create an input that is that, and then kind of go from there. Okay. So that's the first lesson with this is it's not radically different. I mean, it's different to set it up, but once you get it, going, once you add the inputs and you add the right type of inputs, then you're going to just do everything exactly the same that you saw in old videos, old flows. Now, speaking of old stuff, I would not just jump to the conclusion that I had to go replace this. Like I'm not going to go rewrite all my flows with V1 triggers, right? They're, it's deprecated, but the V1 trigger is still there. It's still going to work. I am not rewriting those. You're welcome to, but it sounds like a lot of work to me. So I'm not going to just go jump and do that. Okay. Now let's explore that file one a little more, right? Because this is the one that I think is going to trip people up. The most. I know it's going to trip people up the most because it's a lot more complicated, right? When we did all these other ones, you know, as long as you understood that, you know, your data types, so text, Boolean, so true or false, email is actually text, number is a number, date's a date. As long as you understood that, like what you pass, super simple. And once again, it just wants what it wants. It doesn't care how you get there. So if you need to give it text, it doesn't care if you hard coded hi mom, if you used a variable, if you did a lookup, if the number was there from a number or a calculation or you know whatever, right? All of these, it doesn't matter. It just wants what it wants. It doesn't care how you get there. So the file, that one is very similar as well. It doesn't care, but it needs the right data, right? And this one's a little harder. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna kind of do this in old school way. We're going to add a picture control because this is the simplest way. So we're going to say play. We're going to add a picture real quick of Buddy. So we'll jump over to my desktop and there's Buddy sitting nice and pretty, right? So we'll say open. Okay, so we got the picture of Buddy here. So how do we pass that to flow? So we're going to go up here. We know that we have that optional one, so comma. And look, it says, hey, I need this. I need a record, but it needs a record inside of a record, which is confusing. So the first thing you're going to do is recreate what it says here. So we're going to go curly bracket file colon and then close that. Now, where it says the word record, it doesn't want record right there. It wants a record. All right. So we know records are in curly brackets as well. So if you make in curly brackets and now if you hover, it's going to yell at you. Hey, your formula is missing a column file content bytes with type of blob. So this is its way of telling you what goes inside the record, right? Like it's not magic that I know what's there. Power Apps tells me. So it wants something called Content Bytes. Now, when you do this, make sure that you get the capitalization correct. It has to be capitalized that weird way. And now it wants a blob. 
Well, I know that my add media button one, so add media button one dot media is that blob, right? That is the blob that is the file that we just uploaded, right? It doesn't know how to tell me that, but that's what it is. And now if we hover again, now it says, hey, I'm also missing a file dot name. And notice I'm not typing in the file part. It's, so I just want dot name, all lowercase with a type of text, okay? So we'll put our cursor there. We'll say name, colon, and then we're gonna do add media button one dot file name. That is the file name of the photo that we just uploaded, okay? So that's the record it wants, all right? All the red's gone. It's a really weird format, I totally agree, but like if you don't have it memorized, and I don't have it memorized, I just kind of showed you through how we walked through to get that. But now if we hit play, press this button, go back to our flow, we'll go back over here. Look, this run succeeded. And if we click in here, there's all of our beautiful composers. We've already seen all of them, but six. And so in six, it's like, hey, this is the file you just gave me. Very cool, right? Like that's garbage. We don't know how to use, the, like we can't use it that way. We're gonna talk about how to use it in just a second, but it gives you what you need. Right? So that's how you pass all the different properties. Fun, right? All the different inputs, I guess is the right word for that. Hey, if you're using Power Automate flows, like this type of stuff, right? This video, this is the type of stuff we teach in my training classes. I've got a live class coming up. I have the on-demand classes always available. We got Power Platform University. We can even do one-on-one -on -one mentoring if you want. So if this is the type of stuff that interests you, please go over to training.powerapps911.com and check us out. Now, one thing that is neat about the V2 trigger, go back over here. So have you started seeing this new edit with new designer button up here, right? We got edit like we've always had, we got edit with new designer. If you click on this, you get the new flow studio. So one of the things to understand is that the V2 trigger works in the new studio. If my flows trigger is V1, it doesn't work. It wouldn't let me edit in studio. So this is why they've gotten rid of the V1. They didn't want to support that trigger in the new studio. So now they want to kind of really push us all into this V2 space. But this is one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting, right? Because now we can use the new UI. We're not going to go through the new UI right now. I kind of introduced that in the last video or two videos ago, whatever it was. But it is here and available, right? But if we go back to remember that one that I had with the V1, so this is Power Apps Compose 2. If we go back here and we say edit with new designer, it tells me, right? Because you've got a V1 trigger, you can't use it. So that's how that works. Now, what if you want to create a flow with V1 trigger, right? How can you? So I, you know me, I like to kind of explore and do. It actually wasn't that hard. So if we go back over here to Power Apps. We go here and we go to our Power Automate interface. And if you say add a flow and create a new flow, you get this lovely screen, right? Where you can use, do, choose different templates or create a flow. Guess what happens when you create a flow? You guessed it. You get the old Power Apps V1 trigger. Super confusing, I agree. I'm sure Microsoft is going to fix this hopefully sooner than later, but as of right now, if you wanna make a V1 flow today, then just use the interface through here. Bingo, bango, you can you know build the flow. And once you build the flow here and save it, it'll show up in the regular studio, right? So you don't have to always use this interface. You just have to use this interface to create the flow. Okay, let's close that, right? There's no reason to save any of that. So the last thing I wanna talk about is uploads, right? So I'm going to remake that video. We all know that I invented how to upload files a thousand years ago and it was the only way to do it. And so that video has got a gazillion views, but it's a little confusing because now you don't have the V1 trigger. So I'm going to remake the video. But in the meantime, I wanted somewhere to show people how to do this. So if we go back over here to my power app and go back to the screen. So I've got this one set up to do the same upload process three different ways, right? So if you look at the first V1 upload button, this is what we learned a long time ago, right? We take an attachment control, we JSON encode it, so I give this all the base 64, we then parse down to get rid of the header uh, from the base 64 and the trailing double quote, and then we just run our flow and we send this over, right? So we're running a V1, this is running a flow called um, V1 upload, and if we go open that flow real quick, it had a V1 trigger, and then it just had a create file. And so we uh, asked in Power Apps for the create file file name. And then we did the same thing for file content. We had to run it through that base64 to binary, right? That video, I'll put a link to that video up there if this is all brand new to you, but I'm hoping that you, you're here because of, you watched that video already, but it doesn't matter. Either way, you're good. Okay, so that's how the V1 way worked. Awesome. What if you want to use V2, but you want to use V2 to do it the old way? That is, um, I think, a fair request. So actually, this all looks exactly the same. So if you're gonna use a V2, 
The difference is be when you go and create the V2 one. So let me open that one. Up here, I would have a ask for input. Notice these are both text. I didn't use the file one. Both of them are text. File name is text. File content is a text. Down here, file name is used as that file name text, same way we always did. And then that file content, same thing, you'd run it through that same base64 to binary function, right? So if you just want to do it one for one with that video did, just when you got here, this V2 trigger says saying ask and power apps over here on the side, you would create the dynamic content up here and they would both be text, okay? Then you're just doing a video one for one. Awesome. But what if you want to take advantage of the new file capability and do it a better way? Well, it turns out you can. So if we go over here, so I had this V2 upload. Look, we're going to just pass one thing. We're going to pass the file content bytes is that same last attachment control value. So we don't have to process it through an image control. We don't have to JSON it. We don't have to var base 64, nothing. We can just directly reference it out of the attachment control. And then over here for the name, same thing. We can reference the name, okay? So that's what it would look like. And what does the flow look like? So the flow, right? We're just asking for the file content. Notice the little green icon here, like you can cheat. That means it's a file one. Then down here for the file name, you have to do file name and then the file content, it is file content. Now this one's a little different. So what I'm gonna show you real quick is how to get that because that this is different. So we'll just do the same action, SharePoint create file. Now if we go to file name and then we go down here to inputs, notice that file content is the only thing that shows here. If you put file content here, you hover, look, trigger body file content bytes. That's not what you want. You wanted trigger body file name. Meh. No big deal. What you're gonna do, you're gonna click on this once. See how it's kind of funny blue? You're gonna say control C. You're gonna X out of it. Click in there, click expression, paste this in. You're now gonna get rid of the at and the curly bracket on the front and the curly bracket at the end. Okay, so now we got trigger body. So that's the Power Apps V2 trigger. It's saying get the file, okay? And then get the content bytes. We don't want the content bytes. What do we want here? We want the name, okay? So that's how you get there, right? Unfortunately, their UI doesn't understand the, the pieces. I don't know why, but yeah, whatever, right? So we put name there. Then if you go here to file content, you don't have to do anything special. You can just directly reference file content because that's trigger body file content bytes, which is the, A's and the B's, the ones and the zeros that make up the file. But that's it. You also don't have to do the var base 64. But now if we go over here, right, and let's just test them all to make sure they all work. But if we say play, we'll get rid of the buddy image, we'll attach a file, let's get the latest picture of buddy, one second. All right, so we attach the file, right? So if we say V1 upload, that's done. Let's say V2 upload, that's done. And let's say V2 upload the old way, that's done. And so now we can see the files named 2023, blah, blah, blah. Apparently when I took the picture, we'll do a refresh over here in my SharePoint document library. And look, so there's the V1, there's the V2, and there's the V2 old way. Now remember, whenever you upload a file with flow, you always want to double check that they're all there, right? So we'll open this one. Oh, buddy, close that. We'll open this one. Make sure they all work. Boom. And then just make sure, boom, right? So all three of them are there. That's an important mistake I see people make. They do the uploads and they don't validate that it works and it turns out that they got a little typo somewhere but it created a broken file. We don't want that. We wanna see Buddy's cute little face. All right, I think that's enough for one day, right? So the new V2 trigger, it's part of our lives now. I will start making it, using it, new content. I get that but you know, I realize there's hundreds of thousands of views out there that are showing you the old V1 so this hopefully bridges the gap for you, gets you kind of on the right footing to start using this. Questions, comments, leave them below. Speaking of below, click the like button. You guys don't like enough of my videos. Nah, I don't care. It's, uh, I mean, I do care. I wish you would, but I'm, I'll be over it. All right, anyway, whatever. All right, wrap this video up, Shane. So thanks and have a great day.